Welcome to Recruiting is No Joke. I am your host, the realist recruiter, Joel Algy. It is great to be here. And man, we have so much to cover in today's show. Apologies if I sound a little bit off today. I actually got back from family vacation last week. And unfortunately, uh, I picked up a little bit of a cold. So that's why I sound a little bit off. But it is great to be here with you guys. I feel like there's a, there's a lot to share as always in the job search, job market, in a world where there's just so much bad information, misinformation. We are going to look at some of that today. I thought I would start with the big news. Uh, the August jobs report came out. So I wanted to kind of share uh, what those some of those numbers were, what it looked like, and then give my reaction on it. So I'm going to share this video. Here we go. And so if any of you guys who can't see, the title of the video is U.S. adds 142,000 jobs in August. Uh, the unemployment rate is now at 4.2%. So let's hear what they've got to say. Between, that's uh, going to make a dilemma for Wall Street, 142,000 jobs, but the unemployment rate does tick back down to 4.2%. Net revisions over the past two months down 86,000. So you take 86,000 away. Now we'll have to see what the breakdown of that is, because if you took 86,000 away from last month's uh, very low number, uh, you're not going to get very much. Average hourly earnings up four tenths, much stronger than uh, the two tenths of uh, the month before of July, uh, even higher than the uh, three-tenths anticipated. And weekly hours rise to 34.3. Now, if you were looking for some sign that the economy was slowing, but we're not yet laying off people, you'd look for jobs to be, uh, for hours to be cut back. And that is not what is happening at the moment. I think this doesn't make a case one way or another, which would leave you with a default of 25 basis points. Now, job growth is slower. We've got to break that down and figure out exactly what's going on with that. But the unemployment rate falling back tells the Fed that we're not losing a lot of workers and the economy is not falling off a cliff. All right. So, look, I, I feel like uh, they covered, you know, the basics there. I, I think what's always interesting is uh, when they say statements like that, like the economy is not falling off a cliff or they're still trying to figure out whether or not the job market is is strong or not based on this. Let me tell you, I talk to hundreds and thousands of people each month. I mean, I get people commenting on live shows. I get people commenting on my social media posts. I get DMs. I get a lot of people. And uh, usually this is what they're sharing with me. So I'm going to share my screen here. This is usually what people are sharing with me. So I'm recently unemployed and I'm looking for a new job and I'm getting more insecure and depressed by the day. I don't know how long this search is going to take me. It's been about a month and I've gotten like four interviews. I send in like 15 to 20 applications a day. Granted, some of them are just like easy apply on LinkedIn, count, but some of them I actually put in a lot of time and effort into them. And it's just so depressing one to know that there's like hundreds of other people hoping to get this same job. I feel like I'm begging people to work. Like I feel like I'm getting on my knees and selling my soul to hope for an interview when that interview may not even come, like getting my hopes up, just feeling so rejected. And honestly, like this is just making me fairly frustrated and I don't know how long I'm going to last before I lose my mind. <laughs> so I'm recently unemployed and I'm looking for a new job and I'm getting more insecure and depressed by the day. I don't know how long. All right. So yeah, I played this video because this one was from about two days ago. So many people who, you know, said similar things. So someone on here said, I was unemployed for four and a half months, submitted over a thousand applications. I've done 50 interviews this week. Oddly enough, I got my first two offers. So that was after 5.4.5 months, a thousand applications. I got a job as a union airport janitor starting pay 21 an hour. Uh, someone else, you got interviews. That was a popular one. Unemployed 15 months. I get interviews, but never get the position. I get ghosted. I managed to get three interviews for the year. One ended up being a pyramid scheme, and the other two ended up uh, being canceled because the position was fulfilled. 
I get interviews too and no offers. Competition is so bad. Cold calling businesses and emailing business actually work more than sites like Indeed, ZipRecruiter. Uh, I'm sure this helps. So, so look, I share that video because, you know, kind of going back to the last one, they're talking about the jobs report. If you miss those numbers, basically in August, the jobs report showed that 142,000 jobs were added. And then they said, well, the unemployment rate, though, um, has gone down. But I think I look, I, I try and like dig into number one, what do these numbers actually mean? And I think the first thing that I'll even say before any of this is you'll recall it was like three weeks ago, this same reporting group that reported these numbers admitted that they were 800,000 jobs over what was actually the case. So they admitted to overestimating. So that's who's giving us these numbers. So let's just assume here that um, they are overestimating this 142,000. Let's say it's 100,000 jobs. Then you've got to look at what are those jobs. And I think when you actually get a breakdown of those jobs, and I'm going to see if I can find a breakdown uh, for the August jobs report. But when you actually take a look at what those jobs are, you start to see that it's not even the types of jobs that, that you think. So this is from uh, Chase. Uh, again, so we can really trust it. Uh, just joking. Um, so we got leisure and hospitality, healthcare, construction, Fed state and local government. And then we go down like professional and business is, is pretty small right here. Uh, let me just tell you, most of you are going for professional and business positions. These are the corporate positions. So, you know, that person who is searching for jobs, most of the people I talk to, they're going for corporate positions, like accounting, sales, HR, talent acquisition, these corporate for-profit jobs. So when we look at like the jobs that were added, healthcare, okay, so that's like nurses, I mean, anything that falls into healthcare, and then leisure and hospitality. Look, these are like part-time food jobs, front desk at a hotel. I'm not saying those jobs don't matter, but these are not the jobs that are in demand right now. And then you have con construction and then you have Fed and, and state government. So even when you look at those jobs, there's not really that much that's been added. Uh, interestingly enough, too, when you look information services, right, that's way down. And again, that's another popular area that uh, people are looking for jobs in. So I think sometimes you got to look at like, what are the actual jobs that are getting added? Most of them are hospitality jobs, server jobs, working in restaurants. And then the other are healthcare, which again, a lot of people I know who are nurses are getting asked and getting hired by different companies. It's like a big cycle in that industry. Like I got a friend who said that every two or three years, he switches his nursing job, picks up a sign on bonus and then is on to the next ones. These aren't even really added jobs. This could be one nurse moving to a different place. So you just got, you have to look at the numbers. And then the other number that they always talk about is the unemployment rate. And I don't know, like maybe this is obvious to people, but when I first heard the unemployment rate, I thought, okay, it's just people who aren't working. But that's not even what it is. It's people who aren't working, but have continued to apply to jobs. So it doesn't even really take into account people who've given up, which I'm sure a lot of people have given up even since COVID, I'm sure a lot of people are just giving up trying to find a job. So if you're not constantly applying for jobs, then you don't even get counted in that number. So I wonder how many people took off the month of August and went, you know, forget it. I've applied to a thousand jobs and I haven't heard anything back. I'm going to take some time off. I wonder how many people took the summer off applying for jobs. Um, so that job doesn't actually look at what the actual unemployment rate is. Again, you have to have activity on the job search. So my thought is, Things are a lot worse than anybody is really painting the picture of. I am having real conversations with real people. And most people I talk to, and a lot of these people are recruiters, they're people who are in the HR field. A lot of people are still saying it's a really, really tough market. Uh, business isn't necessarily picking up. And, and look, there's always going to be outliers, right? Like construction, I'm sure if you're in construction, if you're a recruiter in construction, uh, you're killing it, but that is not everybody. So the other thing that people say, uh, which really, really annoys me uh, whenever I do one of these videos on how bad the job search is, this is what people will say. They'll be like, oh, just go get a job. Go get a job at Home Depot. Go get a job at McDonald's. So I did this post a couple of days ago, basically just talking smack about how people say that. So here we go. Just go get a job at McDonald's or Home Depot or insert any retail store. 
That's the advice that people give when they hear that people are on a job search. But here's the thing. It's actually not easy to get a bridge job or a survival job or whatever else you want to call it. You see, if you've got 20 years experience, let's say you've got 20 years experience in marketing and all of that experience is at corporations and you put that on your resume and you go to apply to McDonald's or Home Depot or you try and get a job at the front desk of a hotel, they're going to take one look at your resume. They're going to see your extensive background and they're going to say, actually, you're overqualified. They don't want to make the hire. Number one, they think that you're going to cost too much. And number two, they know the moment another marketing job that comes around that you're a fit for, that you're interested in, you are going to leave this job. So they're much more inclined to actually go with someone who doesn't have any experience. And that's why getting a bridge job or survival job or whatever you call it isn't that easy. And you need to stop saying that to people who are on the job search. All right. And then I'm going to just go get a job at my back, but I'm going to look at some of these comments here so you guys can see. So people say, can we please talk about how boomers always say that hospitality jobs work around your schooling, but I've never hired anyone unless I told them they had open availability. Uh, People are also getting rejected from those. I did three rounds uh, to host at Outback. What? Um, I'm now two years on a bridge job. This market blows. I went from being underqualified and not getting a job at McDonald's to being overqualified and still not being able to get a job at McDonald's. Having people leave these higher wage jobs in order to survive is part of the point of layoffs. There's to road work of power from everywhere. McDonald's turned me down because I was overqualified. So, so look, the reason I did this video again was because I find so much like when I do any kind of video on like how difficult the job search is, how difficult the job market is. I you always just get people who are like, oh, just go get a job at whatever. And the truth is, you know, if if you try to get a job at one of these places and you put, you know, your actual information on the resume, let's just say hypothetically, you changed your resume and you said, you know, for the last 20 years I worked at, I don't know, Nike or you, you know, whatever, just a big company. Even if you didn't really go into depth, in depth, what you did, and that right there is probably going to make you overqualified. And then why are you applying for the, for this position? You you actually find a lot of these people. It's hard to find a job. Like it's hard to find a part time job in retail because in their mind they're still thinking, well, we want to hire someone for a long term. We don't want them just to quit when something else comes along. Um, and so a lot of these people they end up being overqualified. Even just getting a job like that isn't as easy as it seems. And I think what's crazy is, is that are so many of these jobs posted? Like I go to restaurants around my area and everybody's kind of, po- you know, saying that they're hiring, but then I talk to people who have interviewed and people who have applied and it's really hard to get the job. So the job market is crazy. And so at the end of that video, when they were talking about is the economy off the cliff, but I'll, I'll be honest, like I think inflation is really, really high. House prices are insane. People are paying a ton of money for rent. Most people I talk to, it doesn't sound like they're like really, really getting ahead. The only, it's like these big numbers is what people point to. Like, oh, the stock market's the highest it's ever been. And it's like, well, the stock market's the highest it's ever been. So people who are rich are getting richer. Great. You know, delinquencies are really, really high. Credit card rates are high. Interest rates are high. Inflation is high. The job market is really, really tough. I also think what we're seeing right now across the board is layoffs in the name of efficiency and layoffs in the name of saving money. And the reason this matters is because it's not like companies are looking for profitability with growth. Like people aren't talking about growing their company right now. A lot of people are talking about cutting and laying off people because people are a big expense and then using technology to offset those expenses. That's what we're seeing. So it's not like a lot of these companies are growing and going, oh yeah, we've got big growth plans for 2025. It honestly seems like most of these companies are just trying to cut their costs down. When is it going to get better? I I thought I would share um, my thoughts on the September surge, but you might be asking, uh, what is the September surge? So I'm going to do a quick search on TikTok because I know, I know there are a million of the September surge videos. Uh, so we're going to look at what the September surge is. So I'm going to take a look at this from our old friend, uh, Greg Langstaff. So give me one second here and I'm going to share this. Here we go. So this is uh, from Greg Langstaff's page. 
I always I pick on Greg a, a fair amount. He's you know for obvious reasons. If you know any of my content, but here we go. Here's what Gre- Greg's got to say. Trouble landing a job the last three months. It is not your fault. And good news, everything's about to change. So in hiring, June through August is what's known as the summer slump. Hiring managers and HR teams are on vacation. Big priorities are being pushed back. No one's really working on growing their teams. Everyone's kind of just chilling and keeping things steady. And barely anyone's hiring. So that's all about to change because we are approaching what's called the September surge. Essentially, everyone is back in the office and they're kind of chomping at the bit ready to go because they're feeling relaxed, refreshed, rejuvenated. So typically around this time of year, a ton of hiring happens. Here's what you need to do to make sure you're ready. Number one, update your resume and cover letter. I've got some great resources for that in my bio. Number two, make sure your LinkedIn profile is in tip-top shape. And three, this one's most important, start to privately message people in your network to let them know you're searching. Here's a message you can send them. If you've been having trouble landing a job the last three months, if you've been having trouble landing... My thoughts on this is, in most years, this is what we're going to see, and it was actually probably pretty accurate. Like, you probably are going to see schedules normalize, and right, because people in the holidays are out with the, out with the kids, Kids are off school, you go on vacation. I just went on vacation last week. Like people, everyone's going on vacation. Um, and then Labor Day hits and we had Labor Day and a lot of the kids are going back to school. Schedules start to normalize. People aren't going on vacation as much. Uh, and so that does mean that there is some more hiring that, that does take place. But you also have to take a look at like what year are we in? And if we look at this year, is it realistic to think there is going to be a massive bump, a massive bump in jobs? I would love to say that there is, but I just don't see that happening. You know, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a test with my network. So I did a test on LinkedIn. And so for anyone who is just out there and who cannot read what I got here, it basically says, uh, is the September surge a real thing? Uh, it says it's I, I've been coming up more and more in the past few weeks in my TikTok, Instagram live sessions, people asking, what is this September surge? So I thought I was my network of over 250,000 professionals. Let me know what you're seeing. Um, and then I have a little pitch here. If you need help filling these roles, I can help. Um, so I just asked the question, has your company increased hiring in September? And we got like 36% of people said yes. 64% of people said no. And then if we look at some of these comments here, uh, jobs reports just released. Looks like a softer landing with potential rate cuts expected. I'm leaning towards October outliers. Q4 has headcount, but they need to be exceptional. That's Brandon uh, Jeffs. Uh, based on this week, and this is someone who recruits recruiters. We've been bonkers busy from both sides of the desk. Uh, so Alicia said that. Morgan said, we've seen a lot more new job orders and picked up traction this month. We're not hiring internally, but our clients seem to be okay. Cole Sperry said September and October were always my largest producing months as a recruiter this year. If there is a surge, I expect it to be much smaller. Um, yeah, someone said today's jobs report and all the recent downward revisions doesn't paint a good picture, right? That's what we've been saying. Uh, we've been steady all year, but I have seen an increase in Canada's activity. Some Brian Fink, shout out to Brian Fink, uh, really great guy, said, said it has been. Every month is a hiring surge in restaurants. That's Preston, who runs uh, Talent. Uh, yes, got slammed this week, phone and emails blowing up. Um, so look, I think, you know, a lot of the people are commenting and saying it was picking up, but on the whole, you know, I would, I don't know. I, I don't know what these numbers mean. We got 1300 people voting and two thirds of them said that their company has not increased hiring so far. So, you know, like my general thought is I don't think, and I said this last year, I think number one, the numbers are going to show whatever the numbers are going to show. Again, I don't know how much like faith you really take in numbers from the labor bureau of statistics when like they're admitting that they're off every month and they're overestimating. So who knows what those numbers are going to be? I think last year they said that it was somewhat of a surge, but again, if you revise those numbers, who knows where, where we land. All I could talk about is from like experience. What I will say, I've seen a few more of these recruiter positions being posted, which is good. I've seen more people talking about open positions. So if we're taking it from that standpoint, it seems like it could be good. Uh, but, you know, going back to Greg's video where it's going to be this huge thing, he's like, everything's about to change. I doubt that sincerely, just doubt it. I think what we need to see is interest rates go down. That'll start to increase hiring. And like I said before, companies right now are just increased, or they're just interested 
in cutting costs and getting more efficient and not necessarily interested in growing and adding jobs, which is what we need to see if that job market is going to pick up. Um, so let me know what you think. If you guys know, go to the www.therealistrecruiter.com. You can sign up for my podcast newsletter. In the newsletter, I always do a summary of the podcast, but it also gives you an opportunity to write, write into me. Uh, give me what thoughts you have. If you have any feedback on the show, would love to hear that as well. But go to the www.therealistrecruiter.com. Sign up for that podcast newsletter. And then let me know in the podcast. Like, Just let me know uh, in that podcast newsletter what you're seeing and what you think. Um, so that, that is it for the, for the September surge. Um, last story I want to cover today before we talk about, um, something else completely is, um, this new trend that is happening, uh, that I've seen happening more and more. And it's from Yahoo Finance, basically for anyone who, who's out there, I'm sharing my screen. It says Aussie with three Aussie, which is like Australian with three full-time jobs, exposes reality of concerning work trend, 300,000 a year. Um, and it said nearly a million Aussies are holding down a second job, but there's a small cohort that are managing two, three, four, and even five, uh, five full-time roles. And basically, um, this person is dying, talking about how they were juggling uh, their roles and talking about how they do that. Um, and so uh, this is something that we're seeing more and more, I know, in the U.S. as well, uh, particularly in IT or particularly with these jobs which are remote. People are taking on extra work to earn more money. Um, and Look, this is to to me. This is causing other issues as well. I know there's a lot of like trust issues it causes. I personally don't have a problem. I think if you're getting the job done, I think it's totally fine. But then you know, I just think about potential burnout and things like that. But more and more and more people are taking on part time jobs, extra jobs, even more, taking on extra full time jobs. Um, and again, that all that sort of stuff that is in the labor market. That's in these reports that are coming out. So if you took a second a part-time job, maybe that's one of those hospitality jobs. If you took a second full-time job, maybe that's one of those other jobs. Um, so I want to know from you guys, like, are you taking on extra jobs, extra work? Uh, and why are you doing that? I'd also love to know how that's going. So go to www.therealistrecruiter.com, sign up for the podcast newsletter, and uh, please respond to that. All right, guys. Well, that is the show this week. If I saw you at Wreckfest last week, um, great to see you. Uh, guys, if you uh, missed Rackfest uh, and you want to check out some of the sessions I did, if you go to my YouTube channel, if you just put The Realist Recruiter in the YouTube, you're going to be able to see some of the live shows I did. I got the opportunity to partner with Built In. Built In is a really cool place for you to check out jobs. If you're hiring people, technical talent, it's a great place to find some of that technical talent as well. But if I saw you at Rackfest, it was great to see you. I am not going to any more events this year uh, that I know of. Uh, but if you want to keep track of all of the events I am going to, again, go to www.therealistrecruiter.com. You can sign up for my podcast newsletter and you can stay in touch that way. Um, and you can find me on all of my other channels as well. Uh, look, if you're interested in getting involved in the podcast, whether it's sponsorship, collaboration, being on the podcast, if there's topics you want to talk to me about, please, please, please go to www.therealistrecruiter.com, sign up for that newsletter and just get a hold of me. You can also try and DM me on socials. I just get a lot of messages and can't always get back. But that is it for me. I am looking forward to next week's session. I will have updates uh, from lots of conversations I'm having with people um, at Wreckfest uh, as well. So hopefully I'll have some more news, some more upcoming things. And again, if there's topics you want me to talk about, get involved, uh, sign up for that newsletter, and we will talk to you guys next week. Appreciate all of you and enjoy your week. That's it from Recruiting is No Joke podcast. Yeah.